guys, welcome to the first video of 2019 and of course I cannot get the lighting right. Like freaking classic, I just, there's some days where it's, it's just not gonna work for the fur. Regardless of that fact, today's video is gonna be a super exciting one and I think it is a great one to start off the year. It is my best of beauty for 2018. I tried to keep it to a small list of 10 products, 5 skincare and 5 cosmetics and I definitely try to stay clear of products that I mentioned like a thousand times or have been my favourite for a really long time but products that I actually discovered or rediscovered within last year. So without further ado, hopefully you guys are excited and want to know what my best of beauty was and if you do, please keep watching. So the first skincare product that I have selected is the Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk in SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. So this is definitely a rediscovery for me. I believe I used it like years ago, possibly like five years ago when I was in school. I basically stopped using it because it is quite expensive. I usually don't pay more than a thousand yen for my sunscreen in Japan, maybe about eight or nine hundred, and this is three thousand. So it is more than three times the amount that I would usually pay. But I was talking to one of my very beauty conscious co-workers when I was in Japan and she was like I just I keep coming back to this and I was reading reviews and it seemed like a lot of people would try out a lot of different sunscreen and they would come back to the Inessa one so I was like okay I'm just gonna dive in give it a go again I'm older now I can pay 3,000 yen for a sunscreen maybe not but I did definitely give it a go and again I did fall in love with it the biggest standout I believe of this product is that it does have really really high UV protection as I said it is SPF 50 plus but it does use six UV filters including zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as well as other ones that I can't quite pronounce so I will leave it somewhere for you guys to see but it does have really really high protection which is the number one thing it is also not a water-based one so it does stay on the skin better and it is more sweat and waterproof when I try to wash it off with just water, like it won't come off. It is also called a skincare milk because it does have ingredients that are beneficial for your skin. Vitamin E, camellia seed extract, aloe vera and collagen as well as others. So it does help your skin while you do have it on. The formula is quite a loose, as I said, it is a milk. So you do take it up like one of those ones and it does come out like pure white basically. Although once you do apply it, it spreads super easily, super evenly and it does not leave any white cast at all. I feel like that was my experience with a lot of these milk formulas was that it did leave a little bit of a white cast and it also felt kind of greasy on the skin. But I believe the new formulation gives it a really nice finish. Like honestly you can't even feel it, you can't even see it and it does not leave your skin greasy at all. I was wearing this on the really really sunny hot summer in Japan and I did work outside so this was like my go-to sunscreen I just felt like it had more protection and I felt like the protection lasted longer of course no matter what sunscreen it is you do want to reapply it like every two hours which is hard like very very hard but I would put this on in the morning and I would sometimes even layer it a second layer and even with that second layer it didn't feel greasy it didn't feel cakey or it didn't peel or anything at all definitely was this rediscovery and I was like oh this is really good and I really do like it I would probably pay the extra little bit of money to get this again because it really is a great one and just has such high protection compared to the water-based ones. The next product is definitely a new discovery for me and it is the Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. Wish Trend was kind enough to send me this one and it was one of the products that intrigued me the most when I did look at their site and I'm really really glad that they did because honestly it has become one of my favorite toners if not my favorite toner in 2018. So this is the second version that Claire's released of this toner. The first one had essential oils in it which they say it was fine for sensitive skin but apparently a lot of people did react to it. And it also had a slight lavender fragrance which I am not the biggest fan of lavender so I definitely appreciated the unscented version. I did try a sample of the scented version which I did not break out or anything. I did not react to although I did not really like the fragrance. So I'm really glad that they do have this unscented version. As most of you probably do know Claire's is really good with 
with the ingredients that go into their products. It is ethanol, paraben, silicone, steroid, colorant, and cruelty free, as well as it being vegan. So it is free from most things and most harmful ingredients that a lot of people might not like. So it's a great thing about them. The main ingredients are hyaluronic acid, B glucan, and lipidure, which are all really, really moisturizing ingredients, and they do also help water retention in your skin. So it is an extremely hydrating toner. It also does have Centella Asiatica extract which helps soothe down your skin as well. So it is good for all skin types, especially sensitive skin and especially dehydrated skin. I still remember the first time I used it and I was super surprised at how hydrating it was and how quickly it absorbed into my skin. The actual liquid is slightly thick. It's not like super super watery but it does have a little bit of thickness to it but as soon as you do apply it onto your skin it basically turns into water and basically glides across your skin, hydrates and absorbs instantly as I said. So I was using this every day and I am like getting low so I did stop using it just so I can introduce it in this video. I usually went in with about two or three layers of it and there were some days where I felt like that was enough. Plenty of hydration and then I would seal it in with a cream or something. If you are looking for a good hydrating toner, definitely recommend the Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. I was incredibly impressed from the first application. So if you guys haven't tried it out, I would definitely recommend it. And as I have mentioned in other videos before, the great thing about Claire's or Wish Trend products is that they do ship internationally so you guys can actually get your hands on it. Next is a product that I believe I mentioned very briefly in a haul video when I was in Japan. And it is the Hadassi Skin and Body Lotion in the Supply In 14 Plus. This is basically a multi-use toner, lotion, mist, whatever you would like to call it. So they do have quite a few different products in the Hadasu range but this was the one I went for because it did intrigue me with the supply in factor so it has over 14 ingredients including collagen amino acids uh, natural spring water from Mount Fuji and things like that to create a supplement like water so that's what the supply in is from so I really really like the concept and I do really like how affordable it is like this is the spray bottle which is actually more expensive and I think it was still like under a thousand yen and then the refill bottle which is bigger it's like three or four hundred yet so it is super cheap and affordable so you don't feel bad using a ton and it's just so refreshing. <laughs> it is pH balanced, colorant and oil free. And as you can probably tell, it is kind of like a jelly like formula. But as soon as you spray it, as I did before, or just apply it onto your skin, it does turn into a water consistency and is super lightweight. It has a grapefruit fragrance to it, which I absolutely love. As I said, it's super, super refreshing. So I do love the fragrance to it. I know I just can't stop spraying it because that great as I said before it has so many uses to it you can use it under makeup like a toner you can use it over makeup you can use it to cool down your skin after you've been out in the sun you can use it after shaving on like razor burn you can even use it on your hair and you can spritz throughout the day like I have been doing so it is super multi-use and really really gentle I was using it a lot when my skin was super super irritated from hay fever I believe and when my skin was purging when I first got back to Australia after I washed my face I probably did like like two or three layers of it and then put on my sunscreen throughout the day and then I would keep respraying my face throughout the day and it just helped keep it hydrated without it being greasy and I basically didn't have to use any other skincare for the time being just when it was really really irritated and this definitely didn't cause it to irritate any further so it was super super great for that I leave it in the fridge and it stays cool so in the summer it's just a really really nice refresher I would definitely recommend it for people who have sensitive skin and use it like a toner or if you you are after a mist it is a great one as well the whole reason why I bought it in the first place as I have mentioned before is that my best friend does have super super hypersensitive skin and this is basically like the one thing she can use next is another new discovery for me in 2018 and it is the ordinary 100% organic cold pressed rosehip seed oil I remember when rosehip oil first came out and it was huge I mean not when it first came out but when it trended for the first time and I was working at Priceline at the time and I remember seeing this stuff like fly off the shelves absolutely everybody loved it and I remember trying it out but I did not like it at all because I was younger then I did have slightly oilier skin and it just was way too much for my skin I never actually really delved into a full oil since then and it's only recently since I've been back in Australia that I have actually struggled with dryness with my skin it is summer now so it's not as bad but the house that I live in I don't know it's just so so dry and I was just like okay I need an oil 
deal I'm gonna try one out and when I was looking into the ordinary they obviously have quite a few different types of oil but this seemed to be the one that sounded like would suit my skin the most it'll definitely give enough moisture but it wouldn't be too much and I have absolutely been loving it honestly I haven't been using it for long it's only maybe been like a month or so so it's definitely a new recent discovery but it still was enough for me to put it in my best of beauty for 2018 rosehip oil is full of vitamins like vitamin A and C it also does have antioxidant qualities and is also full of essential fatty acids obviously we know it's really really moisturizing to the skin but it also helps with wrinkles brightens skin evens our skin tone firm skin and also fades scars so obviously I have not been using it enough to see the results on a lot of those things but just as a moisturizer it is already doing wonders I feel like after I put on the oil my skin looks glowy it looks moisturized it looks dewy it just looks amazing I would say it's definitely one of the looser formulas it does come in a slightly like yellow color and as you can see it is loose enough that it will just glide down my skin it definitely does absorb quite quickly and it doesn't leave your skin feeling greasy or gross at all so I loved that fact because in the past that was basically the reason why I just didn't like oils because I hated that greasy feeling it left on my skin the smell is one thing that I'm not like the biggest fan of but it is 100% of a pure oil and it has no added scent so obviously it's just gonna have that natural fragrance to it some people say it smells kind of fishy but to me it smells like when you like boil some pasta and then you drizzle a little bit of oil on it to like keep it from sticking to each other a tablespoon of olive oil it's like dough dough and oil <laughs> that's what it smells like to me and honestly the smell doesn't linger it does disappear after a little while so not really something to worry about but this was probably the first oil that i was sold on an oil because of that I am so keen to try so many other oils really really excited about it and I think my skin is finally at a state and at an age that I do need to introduce more oils into my routine so great first oil to add to my skincare routine and I've only used like this much and it's already one of my favorites so the last of my best beauty skincare is pimple patches I had never used pimple patches until I went to Korea this time around and the only reason why I bought it was because I did watch a video from a youtuber talking about stocking up on these and I was just like what is this I had heard of them like over here in Australia a while ago but I tried them and they literally did nothing it was just like a protective covering which like yes I do have a pimple right there right now like I'm sorry I just like gross but it basically just felt like a protective covering overnight but it didn't actually do anything to the pimple so since then I had like basically forgotten about him and then when she mentioned pimple patches I was like oh okay maybe I should give it a go and the first one I bought was the next care one which I have completely used up but they were the ones that I bought in Korea so I bought a box of the next care one in Korea and then recently I have purchased the Cosar X ones and oh my god they are like magic I can't believe how well they work you basically place this patch on your skin and it draws all the impurities from that pimple to the surface and you can see it's a clear patch and after a while you can see the white basically come to the surface of the patch and that's like all the oil and all the impurities from your pimple I'm just like what so you don't have to pop it yourself you don't have to wait for it to just develop over a really long time usually if it's like a fairly ready pimple it'll just be two or three days of applying this patch sometimes even just overnight and it'll be ready to go so I know it's like really really gross but I found them amazing I use them all the time for pimples now I will say they don't work very well on people that are really really deep and not even close to the surface they do not work well but if they are people that are like almost to the surface but still kind of struggling to get there or are definitely like almost ready to pop just pop one of these on it and oh my gosh in no time it'll just be like pew. <laughs> I would say the difference between the two the next care is super super affordable the patches are actually quite thick and the adhesive is quite weak so since these were the first ones that I bought and I only switched over to these like literally like a week or so ago I haven't had that much experience with the Cosrx but I can definitely tell you the Cosrx sticks a lot better a lot longer so you actually use less 
because you don't have to go through as many and they don't fall off. Whereas the next care ones, sometimes they did fall off or they will lose their stickiness quite quickly. But as long as you had really, really clean skin with nothing on it and stuck it on like straight away, it did last a fairly long time. So they're both really good. I know the Cosrx one is slightly more expensive, but if you haven't tried pimple patches before and you get pimples like me, like, wow, they're seriously like, and they do leave, of course, a slight scar, but they don't leave a scar anywhere near as much as if you were to pop it yourself. So my tip with using them is basically keep replacing them until like if you push your skin very slightly, it's just ready to go. Like don't just pop it if you think it's okay. Just it'll be good in its own time. Oh my God, try them out there. They're magic. All right, now we are going to move on to the makeup of the one I do, which I honestly did have a lot more makeup products, but I definitely tried to choose ones that I was like, okay, yes, like I use these the most. So unfortunately, pretty much all of it is just face products because I find I'm a lot more picky with face products than say like lip or eye and stuff like that. So first is the Body Shop Matte Clay Skin Clarifying Foundation. Again, a new discovery for me. I have only been using it for the last few months, but I did introduce it in my holiday makeup tutorial and I really have been loving it so it is 100% vegan which is great formulated without petroleum and mineral oil it does have tea tree oil in it so what that does is basically reduce the oil and also works as an antibacterial agent so it's really good if you do have acne prone breakout prone or oily skin which I don't generally have so I do find it can be slightly drying at times but as I mentioned in my tutorial video as well I do mix it in with a serum and that works fine it does say on the packaging it is matte high coverage 24 hour long wear 24 hour shine control 24 hour breathable wear promotes clearer looking skin and non pore clogging so it all sounds amazing I honestly love this foundation it does have high coverage but it doesn't look cakey at all it really does make your skin look flawless but naturally covered I feel like it almost has the same sort of finish as the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter foundation and this is $19 Australian so it is a lot cheaper than the Fenty one and it really does last all day and it keeps that matteness to it I might get like a little bit shiny on my nose but that's it on my cheeks and stuff it stays matte but not like a cakey gross matte like just a flawless matte and I absolutely love it best foundation that I discovered in 2018 and I will continue to use this especially in summer and especially in humid weather I am traveling to Florida in about a month's time so this will probably be my best friend while I'm over there because it really does last through oil and humidity but it does keep looking great through all of that as well next is basically another foundation face product but it is the Maybelline pure mineral BB super cover in number one natural beige this was a product i basically used every single day when i was in japan this was my work foundation as the name suggests it's not actually a foundation but a bb cream i bought it because it had just such good coverage i tried it in the store and i was like wow this is a bb cream and it has like amazing coverage so i was like hell yeah and i have definitely been loving since this is definitely the one i go for when i'm like oh I don't know what to wear or I just need something lightweight or I just need something to chuck on really quickly. On the directions it does say to dot it like in five spots on your skin and then blend it out with your fingers. I pretty much do that but then follow it up with a beauty blender. When you try to go in straight away with a beauty blender I do find that the sponge basically sucks up all the product and it looks so good, so flawless, really really natural looking but great great coverage and the best thing about it is that it is SPF 50 and PA++++ so it has great sun protection while it does give a good coverage, looks natural, very breathable, amazing. I was so impressed by this product and I don't know why I didn't buy another one like I did have a decent amount left but I still regret not buying another one before I left Japan because it's kind of just the one I go to when I don't know what to do and it just makes your skin look really great even if it's not having the greatest skin day it just makes your skin look a lot more naturally flawless than it is I think I honestly mentioned all of these products in that tutorial that I uploaded I obviously like them all because I use them pretty much every day but next is the cover perfection tip concealer by the Siam I bought this in Korea it is so cheap like I think it's like 
five, six, seven dollars. So super, super cheap concealer. It is SPF 28 with PA++, which is great. I'm in the shade 0.5. And the thing about this concealer is such a little bit goes such a long way and it blends out so, so amazing. I have stopped kind of using concealer all like to highlight my face. I basically just use it under my eyes and it works perfectly for that. Like I literally just dot like three dots and it'll cover like about that much of a mask. Like seriously, it blends out so well and it goes such a long way. It doesn't look cakey at all. It gives such good coverage and this shade 0.5 works perfectly for me. Yes, I am wearing it today and yes, I'm actually wearing it with the Maybelline BB. I'm not even wearing foundation today and even though I have like some breakouts, I think it looks pretty good. It's such a good price for the quality of the product. Like I have paid a lot more for concealers before and it didn't blend out as good as this one. If I am ever in the opportunity to buy it again, I would probably stock up on like a few of them. Like I only bought one when I was in Korea because I hadn't tried it before, but yes. Like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Another Korean product made it into my best for 2018, which is not a surprise, and it is the Innisfree No Sebum Mineral Powder. I know so many people love this, but I had never tried it, so I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a go, and I'm really glad I did, and I totally understand why people love it so much. So it is just a pure translucent setting powder. I do set, like, my concealer, and then a little bit in my pores, and then I do often use it to set my T-zone a little bit, or in the oily area. And it also works really well on top of stick concealer. They do tend to move a little bit just because it is a thicker consistency. But I really, really, really liked dust of this on top. And it just like... I don't even know the word to describe it, but it's just amazing and it's so finely milled that it definitely doesn't leave your skin looking powdery at all it basically doesn't even look like you put powder on but your foundation and concealer and everything just looks like it sits better and it's blended better to your skin you need such little product like the tiniest little amount this has definitely become my favorite new translucent powder and it is also great that it is such a tiny container so it's great for travel I find a lot of translucent powders and stuff like i get the value and all that but they're huge and they're such a pain to carry around Whereas this, so cheap, so small, and so handy for travel, and absolutely fell in love with this one this year. This year? Last year. <laughs> and last, but definitely not least, is my beloved L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black. I know I have mentioned this before, and it is my favorite mascara, but I feel like never actually dedicated a great moment to it, so I'm gonna talk about it now. This was the mascara I was using often when I lived in America. That's like three years ago now three or four years ago wow and i did stop using it when i was in japan just because it costs a lot more in japan and i was like oh so many mascaras and all these good stuff here anyway i don't need to use the l'oreal one anymore but i honestly think i was just looking back photos of my time in america and my lashes were like so on point like they just looked great they looked so long and so like open and they just looked great and i was like oh, i remember using the l'oreal one so when logan came to visit me in japan last year i asked him to buy it for me again and i started using it and i was just like oh, i remember why i love this so much it is still to this day the best mascara i've ever tried and it's crazy because it's like such a common one and it's been around for so long but i feel like a lot of people have forgotten about it or don't talk about it anymore the thing i love about it is first the brush is so so, so thin it is an extremely thin brush it is made specifically for lengthening which i'm all about i think i've mentioned a thousand times before that i am a lengthening person over a volume person because my lashes are already so short that i need to get length out of them before i can even try to add volume or else they're going to be like short little stubby weird hairs it really does help separate each lash and lengthen each lash without fibers which i think is crazy i always thought fibers were the best ones to basically lengthen but the thing about fibers fibers is they dry out really quickly and I do find they can get kind of like clumpy and powdery quite quickly. Whereas this one, they do last a really long time and I think it's basically the sole reason why I stopped wearing false lashes as much. Like I don't wear false lashes on a daily basis anymore, especially to work. I just go with a mascara and this baby works like a charm. Like it is so, so good. I do curl my lashes first and then apply at least two, sometimes three coats of this mascara and then I wait for it to dry and then recurl my top lashes. That's another great thing. It is non-waterproof, but it dries like a waterproof, so it hardens enough that I can recurl them. Because with a lot of mascaras, when I try to recurl them, they will just like stick together or clump up or just look worse. But this one, I can recurl them and they just shoot straight up and they look 
great. I am wearing falsies today, but it's only like the very outer corners. So all of this is my natural lash. And obviously they're standing up really well and separated really well as well. The thing is, it is not waterproof. So if you find a lot of mascara smudge on you, or if you do a lot of sports or walk in the rain a lot, like it's not going to last long because it is not waterproof and it comes off quite easy. But for those of you who don't like waterproof and find waterproof is such a pain to get off, this one does come off really, really easily. Even with warm water, like if you rub it really gently, most of it does come off. So I just find it hits all the texts for me and I have been using pretty much this alone for probably six months or more now. And as I said, I'm going to America next month, so I will definitely be starting up on this again it is my absolute favorite hands down and it will probably continue to be one of my favorite products like ever thank you so much you guys for watching i really really hope you enjoyed my best of beauty 2018 i really was not in a good groove or good filming mood today so i'm sorry if they reflected through the camera but thank you all of you as always and i'll see you guys in my next video bye